Hey guys, welcome to today's lesson. Today we're introducing sequences and series. Um, I'm also going to touch upon what an AP and a GP is. This of course is for the um, Math Studies SLIB course. Of course, uh, this is similar to a topic in the HSC2 unit, uh, series and applications, except some of the, the, the letters are a little bit different, but apart from that, it's pretty much the same. Okay, when I start this topic, I always like to look at um, what the three S's are going to be. Um, the first one is what is a set, or the definition of a set, the definition of a sequence, and then a definition of a series. So first of all, what is a set? Well, a set is simply a group of objects. Uh, I could say one, eight, and two, okay? Or I could even use um, a piano and a brush. <laughs> and a number, okay, it's just a set of objects, all right? Um, you can use letters as well. So what is a sequence? Well, a sequence is in fact a set, but it's gonna be a set that has some type of pattern occurring. Now, I've used a pattern here where we're adding the same number, um, so to add two, add two, so the next one will be 11 and 13. Um, that is what we refer to, I guess, as a linear pattern and I'll talk about that more later on. But it doesn't have to be linear. I could use another set like 5, um, 10, 20, 40. I'm going to use the ellipsis symbols, which means that pattern continues. It's still a pattern, but what's happening here each time? Well, what we're doing is we're doubling or multiplying by 2 to get the next number, so we're going to get 80 and 160, etc. So a sequence is simply a set that has a some type of pattern occurring. Now, we have the last one there, is what is a series? Now, you might remember the famous series of Fibonacci. 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 5 plus 8. What's the next one? Hopefully you said 13. You might remember this series, okay, where you're adding the first two numbers to generate that second number. Add the 1, the 2, we make 3, 2 and 3 makes 5. Now, this is a, a sequence, of course, because there is a pattern happening, but it's more so a series because we are adding the patterns together. We are adding the sequence together. So we call a series the sum of a sequence. So they lead into each other. A set is just a, a group of numbers. A sequence is a group of numbers that has some type of pattern. And a series is the sum of a group of numbers that have some type of pattern. So you can see in the, in the heading today for sequences and series, we're basically using these two things because they are both sets. Just one is simply a pattern and the other is where we add that pattern together. Okay, so that's the, the basis, I guess, of what we're looking at in this topic. We're looking at how to generate patterns, how to find like the 100th term or 200th term. And we're looking at things like add the first 100 terms together. All right. And of course, we've got these APs and GPs because we've spoken about there being two different types of patterns. We have a linear, and I guess we could refer to this as a nonlinear pattern. So you can see the kind of things that we're going to be discussing throughout this particular unit. Okay, so what are we going to look at now? Well, I'm not going to be looking at finding the 100th term at the moment. That will come in a little while. But I'm going to look at what an AP is going to be, first of all. Apologies there. So what is an AP? Well, first of all, an AP is a shorthand word of calling it an arithmetic, an arithmetic progression. I know what you're saying. You're saying, hold on, you said arithmetic, but you just said you wrote down an arithmetic. Well, arithmetic is a subject, right? It's a thing. It's a, it's a noun, if you wish. Whereas arithmetic is describing, I'll use that word, describing the pattern, which means it's an adjective. It's a describing word, all right? So we've got an adjective describing this kind of progression, and it's an arithmetic progression. Uh, whereas a GP, we would refer to as a geometric progression. 
So we've got two different types of um, patterns that will occur that we have to deal with. And within those two types of patterns, we'll look at sequences within that uh, AP or that GP and look at a series within that AP or GP. Um, I'm just going to reflect back again what the AP looked like. So we used an example like this. 3, 5, 7, 9, dot, 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 that ellipsis symbol, which means that pattern continues. Now, first of all, this is a sequence because it is a set of numbers that has a pattern. What makes it arithmetic, however, is that there is a common difference. I'll write that down. So an AP has a common difference. Now, the, sometimes you'll be asked to prove that it's, an a, uh, that it's an AP, which means we're trying to show that these terms okay, have a common difference of 2. Now, how do you kind of explain that? Well, in um, the IB, when I want to talk about the first term, I will talk about U1. If I want to talk about the second term, I talk about U2. The third term, U3. The fourth term, U4. Um, the hundredth term, I talk about U100. And sometimes, when I don't know what term I want to talk about, well, I can just talk about UN, okay, using a bit of algebra. So, if I'm trying to show a common difference, in Basically, what I'm trying to do is say I'm trying to say 5 take away 3, which in fact is U2 take away U1. Now, that we know is 5 take away 3, which equals 2. Now, if you're ever asked to prove that's an AP, just showing that the first two have a common difference of 2 is not good enough. We would have to also show that the next two numbers, or any other two numbers in that pattern, let's say U3 take away U2, is also the same. So, in case of this, 7 take away 5 is also 2, therefore it has a, a common difference. Now that's really important. We do get quite challenging questions there where we might not actually know what these terms are, okay, and we have to find them out. So for example, you might get something that looks like this, uh, 3x um, and then 7. And you're asked to find that, and you've been told in this case that it is an AP and find the common difference. Now, hopefully, hopefully you can probably just say, oh, it's 3, 5, 7. X is 7, right? So X is 5. We can see that that's what it's going to be. Um, but sometimes it's not going to be that easy. And so what we can show is if I say 7 take away X, like I did up here, 7 take away 5, we know that's going to have the same value of X take away 3. And what have you formed? You formed that linear, that linear equation, and hence why I called it a linear um, uh, pattern. Um, and I can plus the x over here, I can uh, so plus the 3 over here, we have 2x is equal to 10, and oh, look at that, x equals 5. Um, you could also even say um, 7 take away 3 is 4 divided by 2, and you get the difference difference is 2, so add 2 is 5. There's lots of different ways that you can do this. Okay. Um, what's a geometric progression? Okay, a geometric progression, well, it's uh, we looked at one, didn't we? We said 2, 4, 8, um, we said 16, 32, oh, I think we looked at 5s, but I'll look at 2s here. So what's happening each time here? Well, there's not a common difference, unfortunately, because when I look at those numbers, and I subtract them, 4 take away 2 is 2, 8 take away 4 is 4, 16 take away 8 is 8. Oh my god, it's not the same, so it's not an AP. But what you might recognize is that it's being multiplied by 2 each time. It's being doubled. The next one will be 64. So we call anything that is a GP, or there is a pattern, but it's not a linear pattern, Okay, we will refer to this as a geometric pattern. I use a different color, it's a bit hard to see. Because we say that there is a common, we call it a ratio. Because if I didn't know that it was being times by 2, how would you work it out? Well, we would say, I'm going to use an R here. We would say, well, 4 divided by 2 is 2. And we would say, 8 divided by 4 is 2. And we'd say there is a common ratio. If I'm doing something similar to that previous question, and I looked at using the U1, U2, 
u3 and u4, I might say that r is equal to u2 divided by u1, which will also equal to u3 divided by u2. So any two terms that are next to each other, and it's a geometric regression, that means if I divide them, they have a common ratio. So again, you can have harder questions of this type where you might be given an x there and you are told that they're the same. So likewise up here, you're saying something like 8 on x is equal to x on 2. Go solve that. But this time it's no longer a linear equation. It's going to be quadratic because when I times that by x and I times that by 2, we get x squared is 16. So x is equal to plus or minus 4. So we get that as a uh, that number as a four. We knew it was a four, but also it could be a minus four. Why you might say, well, if I look at the the ratio being two, what about negative two? You know, it, it's it's possible numbers there for that ratio. Okay, so it kind of works for those sort of sets of numbers. Um, look, later on we'll be looking at those harder questions. I won't look at them just yet. I guess I'm going to sum this up now for you because um, I'm not particularly like too concerned about a lot of that stuff. The, what I am concerned about, of course, is do you know what a sequence is? Okay. Do you know what a series is? Do you know what an AP is? And do you know what a GP is? If you can answer those four questions, then you've, I guess, succeeded or graduated from this lesson. So the answer to these four questions, a sequence is a set that has a pattern. A series is the sum of a sequence. An AP, an AP is an arithmetic progression, which is a linear pattern that has that common difference. The example, of course, for that common pattern or that common difference, something like this. 5, 10, 15, 20, dot, 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 ellipsis. Plus 5, plus 5, plus 5, common difference, tick, it's an AP. And a geometric progression would refer to a, probably a nonlinear pattern. Still needs to be a pattern, though. So 5, 10, looks like an AP, but now goes 20, 40, 80, 160, 320, dot, dot, dot. Because there is that common ratio. Now, although we will deal with how to prove that it's an AP, just in brief as I finish up, you know, if I want to prove that it's an AP, we're trying to show that common difference. We're trying to show that the common difference is u2 take away u1, which is equal to u3 take away u2. If I'm trying to show, to show a common ratio, I'm showing that the ratio is u2 divided by u1, which of course will equal u3 divided by u2 or u4 divided by u3. But if you know those four things, guys, then you can graduate to the next lesson. That is a very brief introduction of what a sequence, what a series is going to be, and of course the differences between an arithmetic progression versus a geometric progression. I hope this was clear. I hope it was concise. Any problems, please feel free to email me. Have an awesome day.